Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Murray Albina Michael and with me is Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Rajya Sabha resumes discussion on motion of thanks to President's address to both Houses of Parliament. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to reply to debate on motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha this evening. Upper House adjourned for one hour as a mark of respect to the Nightingale of India, Lata Mangeshkar. Campaigning reaches crescendo on its penultimate day for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi virtually addresses people of Bijnor, Muradabad and Amroha in Jan Chopal rally. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia launches immunization program, intensified mission Indradhanush 4.0. Schools reopen in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala after decline in COVID-19 cases. Over 169 crores, 63 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. And CISCE announces first-term board exam results for classes 10th and 12th. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-239-78046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. The Rajya Sabha today continued its discussion on motion of thanks to President Ramnath Kovind's address to both the Houses of Parliament. Participating in the discussion, Seema Duedi of BJP said India has successfully administered crores of doses of vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic. She also said free food grains have been provided to over 80 crore people under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan An Yojana. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana ke tahat 80 crore logon ko nisulk rasan dene ka kaam kiya. अपनी सरकार प्रधानमंत्री स्वनिधि योजना से 28 लाख रेडी पटरी वालों को 2900 करोड़ से ज्यादा धन स्वीकृत करके उनको आजीविका चलाने का भी काम किया है कि जहां हमने निशुल्क राशन बाद से दवाइयां को उपलब्ध कराया वही हमने 80000 से अधिक आयुष्मान कार्ड जो गरीबों के लिए हमने बांटे 800 से ज्यादा जन औषधि केंद्रों को खोलकर कम दामों पर दवाई देने का भी काम हम लोगों ने किया है मानवर इसके लिए मैं सरकार को बधाई देना चाहती हूं Highlighting the role of Kisan Rail, Ms. Duvedi said the government has taken several measures for farmers to raise their income. She said 50,000 kilometers of road network have been built during the last seven years. She criticized the opposition parties for making false allegations over the government's steps for the welfare of the people. Congress MP Anand Sharma termed the President's address disappointing as it is far from ground realities and does not reflect the challenges posed before the country. He said the growth achieved by the nation is not a result of the last eight years, but a result of the last 75 years. He also raised the issue of unemployment, saying 42 crore people are unemployed in the country. Mr. Sharma said the gap between poor and rich is continuously widening. Dr. Fawzia Khan of NCP said basic amenities have not been provided to the soldiers as per the CAG report. She said, CAG has asked to investigate the matter as procurement of defence items has been delayed by four years. Former Prime Minister and JDS leader H.D. Devigaura said, budget allocation for the agricultural sector has disappointed the stakeholders. Highlighting the various welfare measures of the government, Prakash Javrekar said, the speed of development works increased during the present government. दुनिया ने देखा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सड़क बिजली पानी रेलवे पोर्ट्स एयरपोर्ट्स वाटरवे लॉजिस्टिक सब बहुत गति से बढ़ा और 2014 के पहले क्या गति थी और आज क्या गति है ये देखा तो 1 is to 3 रेशो है दूसरा एम्पावरमेंट गरीब को घर में नल से जल मिला व्यवस्थाएं मिली डिजिटल पेमेंट मिलने लगा और ये सब हमने देखा है कि कैसे हुआ 
Mr. Javdekar said the government has taken measures including installation of Wi-Fi facilities at 10,000 railway stations. He said outreach of the food security scheme has been increased by implementing it in all states. Intervening in the discussion, Minister of State for Social Justice Ramdas Atavle highlighted several government measures for the welfare of SC and STs in the country. Rakesh Sinha of BJP said this government has removed corruption and commission. He criticized the opposition for continuously questioning Prime Minister Narendra Modi on different issues. Mr. Sinha also talked about different measures taken by the government for the development of the country. K. Ravindra Kumar of TDP also spoke on the motion of thanks to the President's address. The discussion is underway. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will reply to the debate on the motion of thanks to the President's address this evening in the Lok Sabha. The budget session of Parliament began with President Ramnath Kovind's address to both Houses of Parliament assembled together at Central Hall on the 31st of January. The debate on the motion of thanks on the President's address began on the 2nd of February in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. Home Minister Amit Shah will make a statement in both the Houses of Parliament today regarding attack on convoy of AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owesi in the Harpur district of Uttar Pradesh last week. Mr. Owesi is the member of the Lok Sabha. The government has taken several policy initiatives under the Make in India program and brought reforms to encourage indigenous design, development and manufacture of defense equipment in the country. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Minister of State for Defence Ajay Bhatt said these reforms and initiatives reduce the dependence on imports of defence equipment. The minister said many significant projects including 155 mm artillery gun system Dhanush, light combat aircraft Tejas, surface-to-air missile system Akash, INS Kalvari, INS Khanderi and Lakshya Parachute for pilotless target aircraft, among others, have been produced in the country under Make in India program in the last few years. He said the government in the last three years has accorded acceptance of necessity to 150 proposals worth over 2,47,000 crore rupees under various categories of capital procurement which promote domestic manufacturing. A total of 312 girl cadets have been admitted in class 6th in 33 Sanic schools in the country. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today, Minister of State for Defence Ajay Bhatt said these girl cadets have been admitted in the schools with effect from 2021-22 session. He said 23 Sanic schools have admitted 10 girl cadets per school. Union Minister of State for Civil Aviation, General Dr. V.K. Singh, today informed Rajya Sabha that the government has prepared a draft National Air Sports Policy, NASP 2022, to promote air sports in the country. In a written reply, the minister said the government has received the feedback and is examining the comments on draft National Air Sports Policy. Mr. Singh said some of the measures envisaged in the policy to make India a global hub for air sports. The policy will cover most of the air sports like aerobatics, aero modeling, amateur built and experimental aircraft, ballooning, drones, gliding, hang gliding and paragliding, micro lighting and paramotoring, skydiving and vintage aircraft. The minister said in line with the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, domestic design, development and manufacturing of air sports equipment will be promoted. The Rajya Sabha was today adjourned for one hour till 11.05 a.m. as a mark of respect to the legendary singer and former member of the House, Lata Mangeshkar. When the House met this morning, it paid tribute to Lata Mangeshkar by observing silence. Making an obituary reference, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu said, the nation has lost a legendary singer and her passing away created an irreparable void in the world of music. He described her as a compassionate human being and a towering personality in the field of Indian music and film industry. He said Lata Mangeshkar's singing prowess was as diverse as our country. I refer with profound sorrow to passing away of 
Ms. Lata Mangeshka, the legendary playback singer and a former member of this house on the 6th of February 2022 at the age of 92 years. At a very young age, after being introduced to music by her father. Since then, there was no looking back on the chain of events that began back and culminated with her acquiring a status of legend in the world of music. Lataji also served as a nominated member of this house from November 1999 to November 2005. In the passing year of Lata Mangeshkarji, the country has lost a legendary playback singer, a compassionate human being and a towering personality in the world of Indian music and film industry. Sources said that in the Lok Sabha as well, soon after the House will meet at 4 p.m., Speaker Om Birla will read out Lata Mangeshkar's obituary and adjourn the proceedings for an hour. The acclaimed singer passed away in a Mumbai hospital yesterday morning at the age of 92 due to multiple organ failure. She was admitted to Breach Candy Hospital on the 8th of January after she's tested positive for COVID-19. The nation yesterday bid tearful adieu to the Nightingale of India. The mortal remains of the legendary singer were consigned to flames at Shivaji Park in Mumbai with full state honours last evening. The funeral of the legendary singer was attended by a galaxy of leaders, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who placed a wreath on the mortal remains of the iconic singer draped in the national flag. The government has declared a two-day national mourning as a mark of respect to the departed soul. Maharashtra is observing a day-long state mourning today with a complete halt of almost all activities as a mark of respect over the demise of the daughter of the soil and Bharat Ratna Avodi Lata Mangeshkar. The High Court in a notice issued said judicial proceedings at the principal seat as well as the benches of the High Court as also the High Court of Bombay at Goa shall remain suspended and closed today. And it further said, the court shall remain open on the coming Saturday to compensate the loss. Similarly, the RBI has rescheduled its Monetary Policy Committee meeting for tomorrow. The meeting was scheduled to be held from today. It has also halted all transactions and settlements in government securities, primary and secondary, foreign exchange, money markets and rupee interest rate derivatives today and said settlement of all outstanding transactions will accordingly get postponed till tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Mumbai University has postponed the online exams for MA and MCOM of Institute of Distance and Open Learning scheduled for today and said a revised date would be announced soon. The Constitution, Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes Orders Amendment Bill 2022 was introduced in the Rajya Sabha today. The bill seeks to amend the Constitution, Scheduled Caste Order 1950 to omit Bhokta community from the list of Scheduled Caste in Jharkhand and the Constitution, Scheduled Tribes Order 1950 for inclusion of certain communities in the lists of Scheduled Tribes in the state. The bill was introduced by Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Rajya Sabha resumes discussion on motion of thanks to President's address to both Houses of Parliament. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to reply to debate on motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha this evening. Upper House adjourned for one hour as a mark of respect to Nightingale of India, Lata Mangeshkar. Campaigning reaches crescendo on its penultimate day for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi virtually addresses people of Bijnor, Muradabad and Amroha in Jan Chopal rally. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya launches immunization program, intensified mission Indradhanush 4.0. Schools reopen in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala after decline in COVID-19 cases. Over 169 crores, 63 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far and CISCE announces first term board exam results for classes 10th and 12th. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. In Uttar Pradesh, campaigning has reached a crescendo on the penultimate day for the first phase of assembly elections. 
The star campaigners and prominent leaders of various political parties are engaged in public rallies as the electioneering comes to a close tomorrow for the first phase. Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi virtually addresses people of Bijnor, Moradabad and Amroha in a John Chopal rally. Mr. Modi said the government at centre and the BJP government in Uttar Pradesh are committed for welfare of farmers. In the last five years, over 1,50,000 crore rupees have been paid to sugarcane farmers. Mr. Modi said the government's mantra is Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas, Sapka Vishwas and Sapka Prayas. He said there is no place for nepotism and appeasement in the BJP government in the state. भारत के स्वतंत्रता संग्राम में अनेक वीर सपूत पैदा करने वाली इस धरती को मैं आदर पूर्वक नमन करता हूं The Prime Minister said in the last five years it has been the endeavour of Yogi Adityanath government that development should not be confined to a few areas. He said the Delhi Lucknow economic corridor of about 500 kilometers will pass through Moradabad. The work of Aligarh Moradabad corridor is also being completed rapidly. Mr Modi said the Moradabad Bareilly corridor is going to be completed under the double engine BJP government. He said the brass of Moradabad which is famous all over the world has also been linked to the one district one product scheme. The state is going to polls in seven phases from the 10th of February to the 7th of March. In the first phase, 623 candidates in fray for 58 seats that will go to polls on the 10th of this month. The second phase of polling in Uttar Pradesh will be conducted in 55 assembly constituencies across nine districts on the 14th of February, for which 586 candidates are in the fray. On the same day the single phase polling in two states in Goa and Uttarakhand will be held simultaneously 301 candidates are contesting for 40 seats in Goa and 632 candidates are vying for 70 seats in Uttarakhand Campaigning is in full swing for the single phase polls in Goa and Uttarakhand the door to door canvassing and virtual appeals to the voters also continue the political activities have already begun in other poll bound states including Punjab and Manipur with the party leaders deliberating in marathon meetings to finalize the electoral strategies and formations In Manipur 39 candidates have filed their nomination papers for the first phase of polls for the state general elections till yesterday. Campaigning for election is going on smoothly in the state and some political parties also announced the election manifesto. More from our correspondent. In Manipur the nomination filing for both the phases of general election to Manipur legislative assembly is going on right now the last date of submission of nomination file for the first phase will be tomorrow and till yesterday 39 candidates has filed their nomination paper for the first phase poll for the second phase poll The last date of filing nomination paper will be 11 of this month. Some of the political parties in Manipur, Congress Party, NCP, NPP and Kuki People's Alliance has announced election manifesto in connection to the forthcoming general election to Manipur Legislative Assembly. The voting for first phase poll will be held on 27 of February and the voting for second phase will be held on 3rd March. This is DJ Thaksom from Imphal for AIR News. In Uttar Pradesh in the third phase there are 627 candidates in fray for 59 seats across 16 districts that will go to polls on the 20th of February on the same day single phase polling in all the 117 assembly constituencies of Punjab will also take place for which a total of 1304 candidates are in the fray For the fourth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh the scenario of electoral battle will be clear this evening after the withdrawal of candidature polling in this phase will be held on the 23rd of this month in all 652 nominations were found valid during the scrutiny the filing of nominations is underway for the fifth phase in Uttar Pradesh along with the first of the two phase polling in Manipur which will take place on the 27th of February in all 225 nominations were filed in Uttar Pradesh while 39 nominations were filed in Manipur for this phase till last evening 
The nominations can be filed till tomorrow and the scrutiny will be undertaken on Wednesday. The last date for withdrawal of candidature will be 11th of February. The process of filing nominations for the sixth phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh as well as the second and last phase polling in Manipur is also underway. In all, 24 nominations were filed in Uttar Pradesh while no nominations were filed in Manipur for this phase till the last evening. The nominations can be filed till 11th and the scrutiny will be undertaken on the 14th of February. The last date for withdrawal of candidature will be 16th of February. In view of the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, the Election Commission has decided to continue with a ban on road shows, padyatras, cycle or vehicle rallies and processions during the election period. The ban on campaign between 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. will also continue. The Commission has decided to relax restrictions and allow indoor or outdoor public meetings of political parties or contesting candidates in designated spaces, subject to condition that the number of persons attending will be limited to a maximum of 50% of the capacity of indoor halls and 30% of the open ground capacity or the prescribed limit set by state disaster management authorities, whichever is lesser for all phases. Congress has released another list of 28 candidates for the upcoming assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Ashish Shukla will contest from Ameti, while Tasli Muddin will contest from Allahabad West. Priyanka Yadav has been given the ticket from Ghosi Assembly seat. Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Madhviya today launched the immunization program Intensified Mission Indradhanuj 4.0 in New Delhi to protect children and pregnant mothers from severe diseases in the country. It is a special drive to expand full immunization coverage in India. Talking to reporters, Dr. Madhviya said this mission will give impetus to the vaccination coverage. He said as of now, the immunization coverage among children have increased to over 76%. 2014 से कंटिन्यू देश में वैक्सीनेशन चल रहा है गति से चल रहा है और सभी वर्ग समुदाय और सभी क्षेत्र में एक समानता से चल रहा है उसका नतीजा भी हमने नेशनल हेल्थ सर्वे में देखा जो 2014 के पहले वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज 43 परसेंट था वो बढ़ के आज 76 परसेंट तक पहुंच गए हैं लेकिन प्रधानमंत्री जी चाहते हैं कि ये कवरेज 90 परसेंट होना चाहिए our correspondent reports that the goal of Mission Indra Dhanush is to ensure full immunization for children and pregnant women. Mission Indra Dhanush was launched in December 2014 as a special drive to expand immunization coverage in the country. 416 districts across 33 states will be covered under the Mission Indra Dhanush 4.0. This mission will be focused on those districts where the vaccination coverage is comparatively lower. It will be run in two phases. The first phase will run from February to April in 12 states and the second phase will run from March to May this year. Under the mission Indra Dhanush 4.0, 12 vaccines will be administered to the children. Dipendra Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. Schools reopen in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala from today in view of the decline in COVID-19 cases. A surge in COVID cases has led to this closure. In Delhi, all schools, colleges, educational and coaching institutes reopen from today. In the first phase, classes from 9th to 12th are being resumed in a hybrid mode, both online and offline. And in the second phase, classes from nursery to 8th standard will resume from 14th of February. On the other hand, colleges and higher educational institutes are permitted to resume physical classes completely. The Uttar Pradesh government has decided to reopen schools for classes 9th to 12th. Order issued by the state government said that classes in degree colleges start from today, although strict adherence to the COVID protocol will be a must. In Gujarat as well, schools for classes 1st to 9th standard reopen from today. The decision was taken by the state government in a core committee meeting held last week. More After from constant decline in COVID-19 cases in Gujarat, the state government has decided to reopen the schools for class 1 to 9 from today. All government, private and grant in aid schools have resumed their offline education from this morning. However, the online teaching will also continue simultaneously so that students can choose between the two systems. Offline classes will be run with strict implementation of COVID-19 protocol. Offline classes had been suspended after the new cases of COVID-19 started increasing since last December. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. 
In Kerala, regular classes from 10 to 12 standards restarted in adherence to COVID-19 protocol. Colleges are also resuming offline classes for undergraduate and postgraduate students. In Bihar also, all schools, colleges, universities and coaching institutes have been allowed to function. The colleges and coaching institutes have been allowed to operate with full attendance, while the schools from primary to 8th standard are functioning with 50% capacity. In Odisha, physical classes from 8th standard onwards resume from today after being shut for over a month now. The state government has also decided to reopen classes from 1st to 7th standard from the 14th of this month. We have a report. It's after over a month now that the state has registered a new low in COVID-19 infection with below 1,500 fresh cases being reported during the last 24 hours. Coinciding with the viral downswing, the educational institutions from class 8 on to have braced off for offline. Physical classes will, however, be supported by online teaching depending upon the choice of the student to help block any learning gaps. Meanwhile, the Department of Higher Education has asked the authorities of the state, public universities and degree colleges to resume classroom teaching and other academic activities in physical mode from today by observing all COVID-19 protocols. Hostels and other residential facilities are also allowed to be opened up from today. Girish Chandrada, EIR News, Bhubanesh. More than 169 crores, 63 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered in the country under the nationwide vaccination drive so far. The health ministry said more than 14 lakh, 70,000 doses were administered in the last 24 hours. The ministry said a total of 83,876 new cases were reported during the same period. India's active caseload currently stands at 11,8938. The recovery rate is currently at 96.19%. The Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations, CISCE, on February the 7th announced the first term board examination results for classes 10 ICSE and 12 ISC. The examination for classes 10th and 12th were held in November and December last year. Candidates who appeared for the exam can check their results on the website of CISCE-CISCE.org. Results can also be accessed through mobile SMS by sending required details on 092-480-82883. I repeat, 092-480-82883. Professor Shanti Sri Dhulipuri Pandit of Savitri Bai Phule Pune University, Maharashtra, has been appointed as the Vice Chancellor of Jawaharlal University, Delhi, for a period of five years. She is the first female Vice Chancellor of the JNU. Former Vice Chancellor of Jawaharlal University, Jagdish Kumar, has been appointed as the Chairman of University Grants Commission. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Best wishes to all consumers for Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmarked Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahak Jago. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammed Khan has signed the ordinance to amend the Lok Ayukt Act amid protests from the opposition. Governor's move comes a day after he held a meeting with Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan on his return from abroad. In Pakistan, at least five soldiers were killed at a border post in northwestern Kurram district by the militants firing from inside Afghanistan. The military's media wing said in a statement that militants from inside Afghanistan across the international border opened fire on Pakistani troops in Kurram district yesterday. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi is likely to have mainly clear sky. Temperature will vary between 11 and 24 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky later. Minimum temperature was 31 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky. Jammu will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy. Leh is likely to have light snow. And Muzaffarabad will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Rajya Sabha resumes discussion on motion of thanks to President's address to both Houses of Parliament. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to reply to debate on motion of thanks in the Lok Sabha this evening. 
Upper House adjourned for one hour as a mark of respect to the Nightingale of India, Lata Mangeshkar. Campaigning reaches crescendo on its penultimate day for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister and senior BJP leader Narendra Modi virtually addresses people of Bijnor, Muradabad and Amroha in Jan Chopal rally. Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia launches immunization program, intensified mission Indradhanush 4.0. Schools reopen in Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Odisha, Gujarat and Kerala after decline in COVID-19 cases. Over 169 crores, 63 lakh doses of COVID vaccine administered in the country so far. And CISCE announces first-term board exam results for classes 10th and 12th. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website, newsonair.gov.in and news on AIR app. And with that, we end the midday news.